The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. He was a great believer in psychic things. The other one I'll focus on, oh yeah, this was dramatic. So I'm sleeping with my then girlfriend in a very old building. It's actually a, was the dormitory of a girl's uh, high school in Sydney. And uh, I sort of sneak in, she had her own unit because she was a teacher, etc. And I'm woken up in the middle of the night by what I can, what was an invisible man lunging at my throat, lunging at the left hand side of my throat. What did I say about turning your phones to silent? Applies to the speakers as well. So I was woken up by an invisible man lunging at the left, ha right hand side of my throat. I go next morning. I go back to my parents' place where I've left my dog. I left my dog the day before. I get back to him, he's trying to greet me enthusiastically. He's really trying, but he's turning his head. I take him up to the vet. Overnight, he developed an abscess on the right-hand side of his throat. Neil Prisley, Ghost Hunters. Now, if you can't really clearly hear him, Put your hand up so we can force him to use a microphone, okay? Okay, right, if you notice my camera here, as I move around, it's following me, yeah? It's part of the program in the, in the gimbal thing. Okay, so my idea, I just want to do that before I turn, my, turn it off. Um, first, thing I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna ask you is, number one, I don't like microphones, so I tend to move too close or too far away. Um, yeah, we're an amateur group that get together about once a month uh, for a meal, um, and now and again we do some ghost hunting. Yeah, that's the way we work it. Um, that's hence why we're um, we've got the name we have. Um, okay, I have a question which I think just asked just now. Ren just asked the same question, but um, who's actually seen a ghost or sensed a ghost or felt one? So we had one, two. Oh, yourself, sir. Um, three I saw before, four, five, okay, can you write it down, do them, um, um, what do you do it, on the line thing, you know, grab the line, connect with our line and send me the information, okay, about seeing, seeing a ghost, hearing a ghost, <laughs> no, not if you draw, well, spirits are spirits, aren't they really, but, Okay. Now, if you um, well, if you've seen something, even if you're drunk, maybe, maybe you're just more sensitive when you're drunk. <laughs> Who knows? I I don't know. I'm I'm open-minded. I don't believe in something I haven't seen. I haven't seen a ghost yet. I've seen some strange things, but I've not seen a ghost. Um, that's the first question. Um, second question is, what is a ghost? Any ideas? Ghosts? What is a ghost? Yeah, go on. Uh, after the body dies, the spirit leaves the body and it floats above the body and it's supposed to go through what's called through the light to the other side and these are the ones that haven't left and they're still on the earthly plane. Sometimes it's because the people don't even realize they've died and they walk around sort of lost going, why are people not speaking to me? Isn't that being like um, a, a nerd? <laughs> yeah, people don't speak to you. 
That's because you're a nerd. Or are you dead? <laughs> That's the reason. Yeah, but you never know. I don't know. I, I mean, the thing is, what is a ghost? When we see the ghosts in Hollywood, we see the white sheets and the things floating about, and yeah, typical, stereotypical um, movie ghosts. Yeah, I don't believe that. I don't believe we see ghosts as ghosts. Um, what we're doing is we're saying if there are things, people who are mediums and so forth can see or hear or imagine or think or sense something. Um, well, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know. We can't see it. They can. So they say, yes, I c your, your dead relatives next to you and all that stuff. I don't know. Maybe with these machines, we can measure that. I don't know. We're willing to try and measure things. Um, we cover about 60 to 70 percent of the electromagnetic range with these machines. Things like microwaves, x-rays, um, they're, they're dangerous, one thing. And number two, we don't measure them because there's no point. You know, we couldn't go into that environment of, of a, um, an x-ray machine and see if there's a ghost in there, so I'm not interested. But if they're outside those machines, they're in the infrared, the ultraviolet, the visible spectrum, the sonic ranges, we can measure them. Yeah? So we can measure with all sorts of things. Um, the stuff we've got here today, my camera, which is a high-definition camera, it's, it's one of the latest ones, it, it films in all the colors. It doesn't do infrared. To cover the infrared, I have an infrared camera. And to make an infrared camera, you basically take the camera, you take it to pieces, you remove the infrared filter. That's put there to stop the infrared coming and fogging your film or fogging the thing. It makes everything look a little bit pink. What you do then is you put infrared lights on that only transmit infrared. You can put a filter on the front that only allows infrared to come in. So then it's a total infrared camera. I'll show you that later. I'll come round with it. We've got to do it in the dark, though. And it will, you'll see nothing. When you turn it on, you'll see everything in the camera, but nothing in reality around it. So if the ghost only appears in infrared, we wouldn't see it, but the camera would. Yeah, that's, that's why we're using that machine. The same with infrared. We've got ultraviolet, which shows up certain things in ultraviolet. Um, they use these in, in banks and so forth to, to look at, um, if, see if your bank notes are OK. Um, I've got it so we can use it on these signs. So you can see the sign. So you can see where I've highlighted the signs. Yeah. So with, with your naked eye, you can see one thing with different types of wavelengths we can see other things um, also there's the audio for instance if you've ever had a cat or a dog that stares at a place on the wall or into space and cats especially you can you can do that with the cat and it doesn't change its expression it looks at the same place maybe it can hear something they the range of hearing of a cat is a lot higher now we use a machine oh, is it loud? Um, a little little recorder. It doesn't look much, but it's very, very powerful. And it picks up in the WAV format, WAV, as against MP3. The reason? MP3 does compaction. Compaction, is that a word? Compacting. Um, it cuts out the high frequency and the low frequencies that we can't hear to give it more space. The WAV format doesn't. It has everything. So whatever you record, maybe we're recording something that's very high or very low. Elephants can hear very low pitches, and cats and dogs and so forth are very, very high pitches. Yeah? Um, we can't hear them. This can. So if we play this back through certain machinery, it will bring it to an audible range that we can hear. And who knows? Maybe there's somebody talking to us on it. I don't know. No idea. Um, as I say, all the equipment we use is to try and document what other people have seen. So if somebody's seen a ghost, had an experience with a ghost, audible, visual, we can maybe capture it. Um, you know, we can't ask a ghost to appear suddenly. They won't appear on command or whatever, whatever, so I don't know. Um, the other things we do is um, things like, Mickey, can you do me a favor? Can you just, that, that one, okay. 
that's one. If you take it near a power socket or something, or somebody's telephone, even if they're switched off, you should get a reading. So, will it go reading there? No, it's not power telephone. Okay. We use two machines. That's the old version, which you can get everywhere quite cheap. Um, these are these measure electromagnetic fields. You need to be on. It's you know, it says turn them off, but yeah, turn it just for a second. It, it should. Yeah. Probably, probably won't. Look at look at the internet. If you put on the internet, it'll it'll probably pick up. Th this measures electromagnetic fields. These are designed for uh, electricians, and it's to find if there's power cables in the walls and things. It measures three different types of electromagnetic field. Um, you can set this to record what it's looking at. It can pick up the, the highest reading and keep that as in its memory. It can also do um, just a reading. So if you see, you get some reading. There's also a light on it, which is green at the moment. If it comes across electromagnetics, it's not broadcast at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it, it will change its color. If it's red, it's dangerous. Yeah. So I, if you hold it normally near a telephone, which you put in your ear, they turn red. You shouldn't do that. Use hands free. Yeah. And use the hands free on it. Also, I have a television, same thing on my television. It goes bright red on the television. <laughs> you know, come away from it, it's okay. But the telephone here is okay. As soon as you get it, you know, that close. Oh, you got yellow there. Oh, you got a power socket over there, okay. Um, that's on the micro range, so the, the power coming out of that is nothing. But the minute you turn on your television, even if you haven't got a picture, the minute you flick that power on, there's electromagnetics going through the cable, yeah? So that measures it. Oh, okay, if you look at the camera, yeah, Mickey, do that again. If you look at the camera over there now, you see it's, it's turned yellow. That is functioning, yeah. It's not dangerous or anything like that. It's not going to do any harm. Um, it's not onto the red size. The computer will probably do it, yeah, somewhere. Yep, there you go, on the yellow on the computer. So that, that's what that does. That one also has a, a digital reading, so it give me a, a digital reading on it. Um, and also temperature, which is quite important sometimes. Um, one of the ex uh, places we did, I'll let Mickey tell you about it in more detail later, but um, we actually got a reading, and I was doing it with a simple one before, um, and it it went up. What we were doing was, it was a, anybody here know Layla? Layla? Yeah, yeah, you know Layla. Well, we went to Layla's place, and she's telling us about a place that her friend knows all this sort of stuff, and we're getting there. Then she tells me that somebody died in the flat above, and she could hear noises. I'm going, uh, okay. Now, lady has gone away for a couple of months. When she comes back, we're going to investigate there. We actually did a quick, so I said, quick, let's go upstairs and look at this guy. I went to the door, and I put my meter on the door, and it changed up one, it's different colors on this old meter, and it changed up one color. So something was at the door. I said, is the door made of metal? No, it's wood. Well, wood's not electricity. There's no way wood can be. I said, is the power inside? No, no power on. Oh, that's strange. So we moved away from the door, and it lit up again in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so what was it? Well, maybe it was my telephone. Maybe it was something electrical I've got on me. Maybe. Okay, so I gave the meter to Layla, and it was still in the same position. It lit up in the same position, and I stood away. So it's a proof of, 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 you know, what is this? I don't know what it is, but it's to prove it's not me doing it, because it can happen, yeah. It could be a, a magnetic ring or something like that, yeah. So you've got the meter in your hand, it could be that setting the meter off. But you test it with the meters, you go around and you check everything. If it's not going off anywhere, but just one place, it's not you, <laughs> it's got to be something else. So I rushed downstairs and the guys were downstairs. We all came up with the equipment and she's walking up telling us for the film, I'm filming now, of what happened. And then she tells us that somebody else in that building committed suicide by jumping off the balcony. So I'm going, this is where the ghosts are going to be, <laughs> if there's any ghosts. Because somebody who's that traumatic in their head and that, that screwed up, that they're going to kill themselves, it must take a lot of energy and a lot of whatever, determination and desperation. So if there's anybody needs to explain themselves, probably, 
it will be there. So we're going to go back and do a ghost hunt maybe next month or the month after. Definitely, you know, I want to know. Um, and th but that reading was in the middle of nowhere. So we're doing it. We're all stood there. There was Mickey, there was Keith, who's not here today. There was Margaret and, and Tracy and, um, and Layla. And I went around and said, look, you see, this meter, I said, it doesn't give us a reading from Mickey. And I went to Tracy and it lit up at Tracy. And, wow, well, that was weird. So we're talking and Layla's saying, the guy who used to live there was called Gunter, I think. His name was Gunter, or Dieter, Dieter, yeah. And then he liked to be called Chang. Is that right? Yeah, Chang. And the meter lit up. Oh, so you like to be called Chang. The meter lit up. <laughs> so every time we said Chang, it lit up. When we said Dieter, nothing, which is odd. That, that was intelligent. You know, something's right up. So when I went to Tracy, it lit up. And she had no telephone in her hand or anything like that. She's like she's dressed now. And there was no electrical stuff. And she's not wearing a metal ha hat or something. You know, There's no reason for it to light up. I moved away. It went back. It lit up again. So I said to Layla, was Chang a ladies' man? Oh, yay. Love the ladies. There you go. So he was hanging around the lady. Yeah, Not interested in Mickey or me or Keith. <laughs> Nobody. So, you know, it gives you a suggestion. I'm not saying it's a ghost, but I want to know what did that in that in that circumstances. It's and it's all on film. It's on one of my films, yeah, or one of our films, yeah. It's there, so you can look at it and then make your own mind up. You tell me what you see, yeah. If you watch any of our stuff, it's on, on the thing. Um, okay, so we've got different equipment, um, proximity. Um, the proximity alarm. I got the idea for those. People use a thing called a REM pod. If you look at the internet and look at some of this stuff on the internet, it's so damned expensive. And all this is, is the thing you hang over your door in a hotel room in case somebody rattles the door outside. It senses the static electricity and it flashes. It actually makes a very loud noise. So what I've done is I've put an aerial and I've put a LED light on. That's reduced the volume of the noise because it's using electricity another way. And we can use those as perimeter alarms. So if we find there's a reading in a particular area, I will post those at different places. It tells us three or four things. One is if an animal comes in the room, makes a noise or something, it will ping. So then we can point our cameras at that area. If a person comes in, it will make a noise. If it makes a noise and there's nobody there, what made the noise? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's the thing, it's open-minded, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm open to suggestions. If people have ideas, they watch the films and they have an idea what's going on, please let me know because I'm fascinated. I'm very curious. You know, I've seen this stuff. And when you see something in front of you, there is a little clip. I don't know if you, you know, you've got it on the, on the thing or not, if it actually went up, which is about three minutes of these meter readings. Yeah. I did. But I've, I've got it on a stick, doesn't matter. If we have time. Yeah. If we, if we have time, we have to find it. Um, anyway, the other things we've got apart from that. It's three minutes. There was... Um, yeah, they got. Da, da, da. It was one with Margaret. This one. One of those is it? Yeah, yeah, that one. That's it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. I can't remember. It's it's the only movie on it, I think. Probably nothing. Okay. Um, equipment. Yeah, SLS camera. I say that that was a thing. I used it um, once on the last investigation. If you're going to buy one of those, you can buy them. People make them in America and England. They're about $200 or 150 pounds or something like that, ridiculous prices. Um, I actually bought this second hand. It was 1,300, wow. just, just that unit. Okay, it's for a, a game machine. And the actual tab was second hand, cost me about 4,000. So yeah, it's cheaper to <laughs> come look at stuff. You can't buy this stuff new anymore. Um, they don't make it anymore for the things. But it does that stick image, um, which is interesting. I've seen it on other programs where there's been a person standing there like we were today, and then something else has been around them. What's doing that? No idea. Um, that's the idea of it. You know, hopefully it measure. We've got infrared, we've got ultraviolet, we've got the sonic things. Um, let me see, proximity alarms. Um, laser grid, which I simply made I haven't got enough hands to do this. 
are simply made with a laser pen a laser pen which you push the button and it it does a laser grid like that Oh, there you go. Let's see that. It's difficult to see the light because the light's very bright. So it dazzles the camera. It, yeah. See, he likes her. <laughs> My phone on the scene. <laughs> That's the same, it's just looping that, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. You can put the lights back on. That's all right, yeah. You can put the lights back on, there's just... That's just the thing. You can... You need a torch? Okay, don't worry. We'll come and do the lights in a minute. Right, what was I saying? Yeah, okay, well, on that, you saw um, the... Um, thanks. You saw the um, measurement of something. We're not, we're not sure what it was, okay? It, at the door, it moved... Now, that meter was the old meter. It just had a little lights across it. The new meter, um, not only does it have, not only is it illuminated there, it also has a meter on it. I can measure the intensity of that now and then track it and go, oh, it's, it's going up, it's going down. So we should be able to track where that went, which is, that's why I bought that one. Instead of just like, oh, it's red, it's, it's gone up, it's gone down, a thing, yeah. 
So um, hence the new machines. Um, yeah, it, again, when Margaret was at the River Kwai and the bush, why would a bush be electric? <laughs> you know, that's what it measures, electricity. On the actual pole where the electricity was, there was no reading, so there was no electricity in the pole. But on the bush, it, moving it around, it had a reading. Also, another reason is that it's such a bright light on there, I have to put pieces of white paper over the top because it just dazzles the camera. So you can't even see it very easily, you know. But you can hear by the people it, it, when it lit up, you know, again, always again. So, you know, it, I like to see more visual evidence than just people saying something. Okay, this thing, um, as I say, it's a laser grid. And the laser grid, the idea is if something walks in front of the laser grid, then, you know, what is it that's walked in front of it? You know, so if a spirit, blah, 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 walks in front. Um, I use a paper clip because the button on this has to be pushed all the time and I found a paper clip yeah. will keep it on all the time so it's always on and, you can and also it makes a nice little stand as well so when you stand it up on a table so there's that thing so that's cool so I use a couple of those things again um, there's a progression to these things we use the meters to measure electromagnetic fields we do a sweep and we go everywhere and everywhere. If you watch the last film we did, we didn't find anything, I'm afraid, but we swept everywhere with this. If we find a hot spot and this thing lights up, then we put the other equipment in. We put the SLS camera, put the infrared, and see if we can get any other readings to corroborate the readings from this. So it's a progressive thing. Okay, that's um, more or less everything I've done. We also carry these around with us because they're very useful got these on Lazada, 65 bar, <laughs> and they light up, and they recharge from um, the sun, so they're solar powered, and rechargeable batteries, and you can boost your phone from it as well, which is quite useful. So that's one of those things you'll, you'll see us using, they're, they're quite handy to walk when you're walking around in the dark, you know, because we can't see anything. Um, that's the thing about the infrared. Um, questions p I get asked is, why do we investigate in the dark? Anybody, any ideas? Why we investigate in the dark? No? Yeah, he uses this after dinner. <laughs> it's a good time to do it, yeah. Um, one is it's spooky. <laughs> yeah, people get freaked out when it's dark. It's always dark, it's spooky, this sort of thing. I personally think it heightens your senses. When it's dark, you, you, you hit, listen harder and you struggle to see more, okay? Um, also, we use infrared, obviously, so infrared, uh, you can, it's only useful in the dark, no point in the, in the light, it doesn't come on. Um, also, you can um, pick up things in the dark that you can't in the, in the, in the daylight. You, you hear a sound, you focus on that sound. If you're looking at me now, you can see me, but if I had a torchlight just on me and nothing else, you'd be literally only me you'd be focusing on instead of looking over there or over there or over there, yeah, because I'd be highlighted. So when it's dark and you're looking, if something like a, a light moved across, a little tiny thing, you'd see it. You'd pick it up. It's those things, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, that from the corner of your eye, you think, did I see something? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. You know, I don't know. Hopefully we can catch it on film and prove it to people, help them to prove these things. Um, okay, that's why I do it with machinery. Okay, Mickey, you're going to tell them about your place. Yeah. About your ghost experiences. My house. Hello. Good evening. I'm Mickey. Hello. My house was Mr. Foot, and the cushions on the bed were mine. When I took that light and put it on the cushions, nothing. When Keith, previously, had touched every bush cushion, and they lit up like a Christmas tree. My house, uh, I was sleeping one night, and my foot was out the bottom of the blanket and something like a child's hand 
ran straight down with nails down my not not painfully just as if it was a child having fun and previous to that I'd been woken up three nights running by someone prodding me awake in my back yeah prodding me that that's my back <laughs> prodding me awake uh, so we had the visit from them I I had had what? So I was say the, the actual where, when he was prod, he was on his bed, and in the film we took, um, we measured the bed. Ke Keith went up first, did me? Were you first? Yeah. Yeah. Keith. yeah. Keith, Keith and Margaret went up first, and they they did a reading. But they read, they measured the wall. There's a bit of moisture in the wall, I think, because it read on the wall. Obviously, the air conditioner got to the pillows, and we got a reading on the pillows. No, no reason, there's no electricity. I, I purposely said, is there an electric blanket? Just so that people realize from another country, we don't have electric blankets in Thailand. You know, no, there's no electric blanket there. When we got right across the, the pillows, it was red. Later, we got Mickey and uh, Tracy to come up. They, had, they knew nothing about it. They come up measured in exactly the same places, and they got a reading um, a little bit, nothing. nothing. There was nothing on the pillow and nothing, gone with the same machine. But when they got to the center of the bed, they got a reading right bang in the middle of the bed. When I put the thermal camera, not this one, an old camera I had, it's a very small one, it was a cold spot in the middle of the bed. The whole bed was red, and there was a green spot in the middle of the bed. Why? Something must have been, where he gets prodded <laughs> in the middle of the bed was a cold spot, which suggested to me something was drawing the energy. But again, we don't know what, no idea. And I had to sleep alone. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> my first experience was when I was about 12. Uh, we lived in a four bedroom house that backed onto forests and fields. And uh, my brother Sterling was poorly, so he had got the best room at the back of the house. One brother out the other bedroom, my mum, and then the other three bed, uh, brothers, and incl including myself, in the other bedroom. Uh, a fairly sized room, I was right up against the wall, sharing a double bed with my, two of my brothers. Uh, in the far right hand corner was the bedroom door, in out. Opposite the bedroom door was uh, a hot water tank. About three foot from the water tank was a white shroud, all made up of hundreds of dots, transparent. But it, for some reason, I just took it for granted it was female. It just looked. It wasn't tall, it wasn't small, it was kind of just feminine. Just had this feminine awe. And uh, my brother Sterling was crying louder and louder. And this ghost, which had never moved, it wasn't a reflection from lights or I, I moved the curtains, uh, but I stayed underneath the blanket because I didn't want it coming towards me. But Sterling got louder and louder and I couldn't sleep so I kept my eye on the ghost, but checked that the door was shut. And then my mum opened the door and st spoke to me and said, shut up. I, I was just complaining about the ghost. She thought I was complaining about Sterling. She went in to see Sterling, and during that time, this ghost was moving towards the door and back again, towards the door and back again, just just by about two foot, not nothing nothing large, but it was moving, and I didn't want it coming my way, so I'm under the blanket. Within five minutes of my mum going in to see Sterling, all hell was let loose. Ten or fifteen minutes later, ne 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 ne, ambulance came, took Sterling away, and he was apparently minutes from uh, having a burst appendix. So if the ghost hadn't moved and moved me, it 
could have died. That's what made me believe in ghosts. I've had a few other experiences since, but nothing like that, nothing life-saving. Hmm? <laughs> Anybody else? Experiences, experiences. We've we've got a few people out of hands that are going to send me some stuff, hopefully, and I'll be interested to read it and, and look into it. Um, you got one, sorry. You got the peripheral. I can relate to something uh, similar to Rims. Um, I was on a med cruise and halfway across the Atlantic, and uh, it was the middle of the night. And all of a sudden, I woke up, and I was, like, choking. I couldn't sleep. So I went up topside the rest of the night. And the next morning, they called me to the captain's office and said my father died. But is that, is that a ghost experience, or is that I have because I have extra sensory perception to somebody that you love a lot or something, somebody you're close to? It's not an either or. You have a connection with them. And so, you know, uh, I, I, has anybody had anything they would regard as like a psychic experience with dogs or something s spooky that's happened with a dog or a cat or a pet? Well, you, okay, well, I'll just sh share one of mine. Had a very, very strong connection with this dog. It's a long, long story short. There was this very bad energy had come into this room that actually made me very sick. Anyway, and we used certain techniques to, to get rid of the bad energy in this room. Broad daylight. My dog goes to the there you go. Man. My dog goes to the other side of the wall, which is the kitchen. It stares at this one spot in the wall, which is the other side of this this room we're driving the bad energies out of. It stares at the wall, broad daylight, and goes, look, 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 look. You know that noise dogs make when they see something that they think might be dangerous and stuff so nobody else has had a psychic connection with dogs at some stage not with dogs <coughs> something happened to me when I was a young teenager and I was at home and my sister who lived in California we had no reason to expect her to visit or anything else and I'm sitting in the living room and my car drives up, drives up the driveway. I said, that's Carol. And I got to walk to the back door, and she was getting out of the car. So, I don't know, you can call it a psychic experience or whatever, but that's the only one I've had. I'm pretty pragmatic. But I will relate a little bit later. The Thais do believe in ghosts, and I've got a couple of experiences there. Yeah, um, yeah the Thai... Anybody had experiences of Thai people with ghosts? Apart from you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, over there. Darren. Okay. Can you come down here? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, I, I found the people I usually um, are talking about Thai ghost things. Um, they're very scared of ghosts. And they're more at the spiritual side of the ghost rather than the technical side of the ghost. You know, for instance, I, I took some people with us to keep an eye on the equipment, and they wouldn't come in the ghost place. <laughs> they were too scared. You know, they're very scared of ghosts. You know, it, it's strange. I've had comments on my on my sites. Um, oh, aren't you not brave? Aren't you so brave? We feel nothing. We we're not scared of ghosts. We don't believe in them. <laughs> That's the reason why. If I see something, I'll be the first one out the door. I'll be gone, you know, that'll be it. Um, but I don't believe in something till I see it. I'm more scared of people, you know? Um, I'm more scared of somebody coming along and mugging me <laughs> or robbing me when I'm in an empty house, you know, walking about. That's why I like to have some security outside, keep an eye on the car, keep an eye on the equipment, keep an eye on me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not worried then, no, no problems going on. Okay, yeah, you're gonna do that, you got a mic? Hi, I'm, I'm Gavin. Uh, I, I used to live in Siracha, which is 20, 25 clicks along the road. And I, I rented a, an old Thai house there, probably about 40, 50 years old. I actually stayed there for about four or five years. 
and personally myself I was completely at ease in the house but two or three things happened for other people I uh, I had a visitor a, you, you could call her a girlfriend who came and stayed a few times and uh, she told me that she didn't want to see me anymore that she didn't want to come to the house anymore but she lived in Bangkok and I thought oh that's uh, I suppose that's uh, that's an easy cop uh, dumping somebody getting rid of them saying that I don't want to stay in your house anymore I said well, what's, what's the problem she says when I was sleeping she said somebody a woman a Thai woman came and sat at the end of the bed spoke to her in Thai and asked her who are you uh-huh and do, do you know Mr. Gavin, which is me? Yeah, and uh, this, this obviously freaked her out. She didn't tell me anything about it. Uh, now, now, now the, the coincident thing about it is about a year later, my, uh, my friend from the UK who lives in Karat, he came with his Thai wife, and they stayed in the house the weekend. And then months later, we met up again, and we were having a couple of drinks, and he said, oh, Gavin, my wife will never be back in your house again. I said, what? why is that? He said, she claims that while she was sleeping, some elderly Thai woman came, sat at the end of the bed, and says to her, who are you, and what are you doing in my house? No, it was, it was just such a strange coincidence, two people who have n never met each other or never like we would meet each other had the exact same story. That's but interesting. But, but I, did find, I did find out that previous owners, the grandmother, had died in the house probably about 50 years before. Well, that, that's good because you got some uh, confirmation. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. That's cool. It's funny because the gentleman over there said about drunk people seeing more ghosts. I think yeah. drunk people probably talk about more ghosts uh -huh. because they're not shy. Yeah. You know, having alcohol stops you being shy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when people are a bit shy, yeah. Have you anyone seen a ghost? You know, like that. When you yeah. when you yeah, I've seen one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So, so for I think that for me personally, no problem whatsoever with the house. Always yeah. had a really good feeling about the house. Yeah. Well, that pro it could be another thing with it, the psychological side of it. Yeah. Of if you feel good, the person's accepting you. Also, this was a woman. Um, a caustic, if you like, other women. Ex exactly, yeah. and and they mentioned me by name. Yeah, so she's basically. How, how do you know? Well, Kun Gav, they would have said in Thai. You she, know what she's I mean? sort of like yeah. attached to you, like yeah. like uh -huh. she's your mum or you're married or something. That's how she sees it. Yeah. And a strange woman's in your bed. She's going to accost them. You know, what are you doing in my husband's bed? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> or my son's bed, or uh. or something. Which is uh. you know, an acceptable thing if the person's alive. You know, you'd expect that, but when they're, they're not alive. Um, I heard some stories which we're going to go and investigate sometime, um, the future, in um, Phuket about the tsunami thing. And one of the people down there, he was a, a guard at one of the supermarkets or something, he heard people going down the beach calling for their relations, but there was nobody there. So these were dead people who thought they were still alive. Is there any chance the ghost hunters could go to your old house and do an investigation there? Yeah, is the house still standing? <laughs> it's still there. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Have you... Yeah. I'll give you one of those. Oh, it's two there. It doesn't matter. And a pen and things. Oh, you can. Yeah. Um, there's a piece of paper there, link to my site, and write down a little bit, and then do it on the site if you like, and tell us about it, please, and we'll do something. Oh, the thing, the, the thing that could work for people here, anyone, anybody own a business or, or do some kind of business thing, a shop thing, no, nothing, no, rent condos, that sort of stuff. Anyway, if you don't, if you know someone who does, and your business is getting a ghost or some kind of haunting. Yeah, we will come and investigate for you. If your house is getting haunted or something, or you think you've seen someone, we'd love to come and investigate, okay? Um, we don't charge, there's no charge, all right? We, we won't, you won't have to pay for anything. You don't have to buy T-shirts or anything, you know? <laughs> there's nothing there, yeah. Um, 
it's all free. Um, what we're trying to do is get more publicity for our websites and things, you know, and, and get, get more people looking at it and relating to it, and you know, hopefully build something going like that. But it's nothing commercial. We're not trying to fake anything. You'll look at our stuff. You won't see a ghost. You'll see some meter readings. You'll see some lights. And we want to know what's going on. But you will not see somebody in a sheet or something with a piece of string being pulled across the floor. You know, we know there's rubbish. We know that you know. You see the, a kitchen. All the utensils are flying out the drawers. When those utensils go back in the drawers, I'll be interested. You know, the coming out's easy. Things going back, doors closing, not opening. That's what I'm interested in. You know, the water goes into the bottle, not tips out the bottle. You know, apart from reversing the film. That's the sort of stuff that will prove to me, well, not prove to me, will make me interested. You know, when things, doors open, things come out, they're pulling it on bits of fish tackle, you know, fishing tackle. It's, it's easy. It's invisible to see, but you can feel it. And it's very strong. Yeah, yeah. A chair goes across the floor. <gasps> no, it's not. It's somebody pulling it with a piece of string. Yeah, it, it's fake. We do not fake anything. I mean, I mean if you see something, it, it won't be us jumping around saying, oh, look, there's a ghost. No. If you see something, we can't explain it. You know, if you can explain it to me, I'll be very interested, really. I'm fascinated. I'm very, very curious. Okay, my only one experience, um, uh, an interesting one, was not a ghost. I don't know what it was. I was a child of about 11. Um, I lived in Margate in Kent. And I lived in Ramsgate, actually, but my grandmother had a shop in Margate, and I used to work in her shop. I would come back, and there, um, every the buses would travel every ten minutes. So if you if you just missed a bus, you could walk a couple of stops and save a couple of pence, which I did. And I went under the bridge, which is where the railway goes, and, the, and along a bit to the bus stop. Now I'm stood at the bus stop, and it's night time. And I'm looking across the road at the other bus stop across the other side of the road. There's a few trees, some grass and um, a bit of a bank, a bit of an earth bank, and behind the earth bank is a big car park. But I'm standing there looking at the sky, and I can see three or four lines like strip lights going across the sky, not very long, maybe a couple of meters long. And I'm trying to work out what it is. Now I'm thinking, train? No, the train track's at the end of the road going that way. It looks maybe like someone's got the shutters of a Venetian blind open, but there's no house there. So the next day I'm on the bus coming back, I get on the top of the bus, it's a double decker, and I'm looking, when it gets to that bus stop, I look up, there is nothing there. There's some trees, bush, and this big empty car park. What the hell did I see up in the sky? If it was a wagon, it'd have to be two wagons high. It wasn't a UFO, it wasn't circular. I do not know what I saw. You know, that's one of those mysteries, you know. I don't know what the hell it was. Anyway, that's, m how long have we done? Have we run out of time? Uh, I know this guy a bit, and believe me, he could be in here in two hours still talking. <laughs> Big round of applause for Neil and the Ghost Hunters of Thailand. Right? Um, and actually really worked out well. I think that we were pushed out of our normal venue to here because it made it more intimate. And I, was, I felt I was surrounded by creepy things being so close to all these I'm people. Pretty, I'm pretty very intimate at the moment. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he w no, Neil will stay around for quite a while answering any questions you have. Yeah. Having a look at the equipment. We turn off the lights. You can see yourself in infra yeah, infrared. Yeah, yeah. So um, have, have, a, have a seat and try to stop talking for a while, okay, Neil? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, yeah. Q&A Q now, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, ask some questions, yeah. So somebody, can somebody give the mic to people who... Uh, yeah. Somebody do the mic running for me. Um, who... who, who our usual crowd's not here, so okay. I'm an electrical engineer for about 30 or 40 years. I have a large background, or big background, in physics. Scientists have conducted millions of experiments. And when they have conducted these experiments, they know how their equipment works. They know what they're measuring. 
they've calibrated their equipment. And in all this, no one's ever detected any of this stuff. I hate to be impolite to our guest, no, don't worry. <laughs> but you're using dime store equipment that you don't even know how it works. Oh, I do know how it works. Yeah, I, I'm an amateur physicist, if you like, but okay. I know how it works, yeah. Oh, can, I, can I ask another question? You do, 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 do. That okay. was a question, yeah. Can you tell me about Maxwell's equations? No, I can't. <laughs> I'm not interested in that, though. Okay. To understand how your equipment works, you need to know Maxwell's equations. Okay, fair enough. I agree with you in some respect. I understand the equipment I use. I research everything I use and try and work out what I need to understand to work the equipment and then get some kind of results. I don't claim to see ghosts. That's the whole point. What I'm trying to do is measure things that other people might be able to use, which would be quite cool. Uh, anybody, another question? Question, comment, story? Anybody got a ghost with them they'd like to share? No. All right, again, a round of applause. For, oh, wait a minute. The white shroud ghost, I never saw again. And then after a couple of years, we moved about 10 mile to a, a three bedroomed house. Um, we still all had separate rooms, except two of my brothers had got married and uh, moved out. The place where we lived was covering about five acres a multi-story block of flats and two and three bedroomed houses. When I came home from work, my two brothers were in the kitchen washing two skulls. Apparently, the whole block of flats and everything uh, they had been built on a cemetery, a massive cemetery. Georgian, I think. And they were still excavating, digging up old graves. And my two brothers thought they would wash these schools that they brought home uh, because they might fetch more money. <laughs> I can't fault them, in a sense. People are dead, not going to feel anything. And there are often collectors who would like that sort of thing to look at or for Halloween. Anyway, when my two brothers, two older brothers, discovered this, they invited the whole family to have a go with the Ouija boards. So we played the Ouija board. And when I joined them, everything was moving. You don't touch the, the glass keep your finger, you know, sort of one or two centimeters away from the glass and talk to people. And we were talking to people who didn't even know they were dead. Some thought they was asleep on the sofa, some thought they was in bed, but very few actually admitted or thought that they were dead. But it was still a good experience. I was tossed away. They, they stopped me from playing because they said I was moving the glass. But I wasn't. I didn't even touch the glass, but it was moving quite well. I went in, had uh, made myself a jam sandwich and a cup of tea. By the time I finished and came out, they were all getting ready to go home. They were all putting the coats on and stuff. So I went and sat down at the table and just curiosity's sake, put my finger on the glass and said, is anybody there? And that glass moved around so quickly and answered all the questions, and it was just me. And I was not touching that glass. I kept up till about two o'clock in the morning, and then I went to bed. And I'm just getting in bed when my bedroom door slammed and in walked, six foot six, blonde haired, lumberjack, jeans, lumberjack shirt, the lot. And I said, what do you want? 
what are you doing in my bedroom? And he came towards the bed and put his hands down towards the bed. Like that. Big grin on his face. And I said, come on, what do you want? My hand went straight through him. And he disappeared. Thank you. Well, thank again to Neil. That, that was Mickey <coughs> and the rest of the ghost hunters. Uh, next week, next week we have something to that will hope a talk that will hopefully stop you becoming a ghost too soon. Okay, it's a talk about the worst disease in the world. And it's it's going to be looking at metabolic syndrome, basically. So uh, this is a probably what's going to kill a lot of the the uh, people in this room is some fallout from metabolic syndrome. So it's going to be a very, very interesting and uh, important talk. He's given a talk before that was really good on uh, diabetes and insulin. It was very good. So uh, we're going to move into open forums soon, but uh, we've got to what? The park. Oh, sorry. The ghost. Sorry. Yes. Okay. This is a little acknowledgement. It reads, Neil Brist to... Uh, for the presentation by Neil Brisley and the Ghost Hunters for your talk about things that go bump in the night. I thought maybe that was a reference to s things that go on in Soy 6, but apparently it's not. All right. Yeah, come on, yeah, let's get the whole team in. Yeah, excellent. The, the team that's here. Come on, Margaret. Thanks, guys, and uh, uh, it, 